Heavy Metal Finance Quite a few years ago now, in the late 1990s and very early on in my career, I used to work for a company that helped customers of certain retail stores manage their finances. My role was as a sort of compliance officer, ensuring that the staff who dealt with customers were following the rules. If they messed it up, it was a big problem, and could potentially impact the customer's credit score, result in them defaulting on payments, and even end up in court. I took my job pretty seriously. The company was not particularly well run from a management perspective. They'd made a lot of money very quickly, and had grown from a handful of people in a garage to a four-story office building in the CBD. Within the space of a year and a half, there wasn't a great deal in the way of policy or process framework. So I had to develop a lot of the tools to do my job myself. This involved some programming a basic system to track what I was doing. Link to the extensive rule set and automate some of the more tedious reporting. It would also track how long I was spending on each task so that I could see about which elements I could streamline. Now, I was quite proud of this system and called it Hendrix, as I am a massive Jimi Hendrix fan and it used to play about 5 seconds of the instrumental version of Little Wing when it started up. As I had my own little room, cupboard, this never used to annoy anyone. I can geek out about that type of stuff. At this point before corporate IT became rather more rigid I used to write a lot of my own tools. I was the only person who was using Hendrix, and it was a tool just for me. My manager the archetypal middle manager decided that because it allowed you to quickly reference which rules applied to which situation, it should be rolled out to all staff. Now, I had previously considered this, but I argued that I couldn't guarantee that it would be fit for task because I'd designed it for my own use and I'd need to make some changes first. But he rolled it out anyway without me even getting a chance to tweak it. He got a Team Player of the Week award for introducing a tool to make life easier for frontline staff. In his acceptance speech, this was a big rah-rah thing each week for the company. He thanked his manager. I didn't even get a mention. Then, a two weeks later, he realized that I'd been recording how long I had been working on certain tasks within the program. Now. I'd realized fairly quickly that this part of the program was a little too detailed. And I didn't really care too much about every single task within each incident. So I just used it to record how long I spent on the entire incident. Rather than each part of the incident. My manager invited me to a meeting about Hendrix. No details given. And I attended thinking it was going to be a list of requested features only to find out that the head of HR was there. And I was being given a written warning for falsifying timekeeping. Because each customer interaction was a certain length, my manager had decided that this was what I should be recording. And not how long I was spending listening to, analyzing, checking, and reporting on the interaction. Remember, this is a tool that I had designed for my own use and it was not being used to calculate how much I was being paid, or whether I was doing enough work during the day or not. There was nothing in place for that at all. I had not made the records public he'd found them in a file on the server that only he and I had access to. Nobody else was supposed to even have this tool. I argued this, and was told that it wasn't up to me, and I was getting a warning regardless. It got really quite heated and unpleasant, though I got the impression that the head of HR was a little embarrassed about the whole thing. They said, however, that if I wanted to consult a lawyer, I was quite within my rights to do so. It was at this point that I was rather smugly able to state that I could get two lawyers there. Within the hour, as both my parents were practicing, and my mother was in point of fact an employment lawyer. I realize that this is a bit of a deus ex machina. 
but it only has partial bearing on the story. Suddenly there was a completely different attitude from my manager. There was an attempt to roll back the issue and turn it into a suggestion that perhaps I should be a bit more careful with my timekeeping in future. But I was pretty angry at this point. I pointed out that my software had been rolled out to all staff against my wishes. I was told that this wasn't up to me, as it was company intellectual property, until I advised them that I'd written it in my own time. At home on my own computer it was plugging into the official government rule set, and not the corporate intranet one I had not confirmed it fit for general release at all I had received special dispensation from IT to install it on a single work computer. Mine and I would require them to pay a license fee for anything beyond this. To be fair, this would have been tied up in court for a long time. And I've got no idea whether I'd have been successful. So in the end I relented. If they wanted to use Hendrix. Well, I guess they could. I just made sure that Little Wing would play for one second longer on startup for every week the software was in use. Then I quit the following Monday and was working for another company by the Monday after that. Three or four months later I got a phone call from my former manager asking to come fix the problems with my software. He hung up when I quoted him my consultant fees. I don't know why IT weren't able to figure it out. It was just a setting in a text file. Not at all hard to find. A friend who remained in the company tells me they continued to use Hendrix for a whole year. The mornings in the call center were apparently horrifying. With little wing playing for around a minute every time someone started a new shift. Sometimes it would play on 20 computers at once few seconds apart on tinny PC speakers that they were unable due to IT to mute. The best kind of revenge is served not only cold but also with a side of little wing. Two years later, someone finds the .txt file. They know they can delete the line of code and everything will be fine with no more Jimmy songs. Every shift. Or. They can continue the legacy by having the song repeat once the seconds go longer than just the one song. Because they were wronged and not given credit by the same boss. They will go with option 2. Edit. I somehow butchered Jimmy into Jimmy. Face palm to myself. This need to be cross posted on our Tales from Tech Support. As a former CC drone. I'd be leaning TF right into this and whoops I turned Hendrix off going to have to restart it again. For the 11th yeth time today. Rinse and repeat. The compliance part is that you were able to bring the lawyers? The rest of the story doesn't sound like a win. You wasted a lot of personal free time for creating an app that you gave for free to a company that employed you. Depending on how mad you are still at this place, you could try syncing them. By now I assume they're playing a rather significant portion of the song. I assume the copyright owner and the RIAA would love to know about this music being used in commercial software without a license. I'm surprised your manager had the awareness to immediately back off. Most men of what I expect to be his ilk would have told you to bring it on. Relying on the usual corporate tactic of delaying and outspending you in the courts. I wouldn't expect that type to realize that wouldn't work this time since the attorneys were your parents. And therefore likely not going to charge you. I love this. Shouldn't Hendrix be getting royalties for using his music? Hashtag this is why I hate wings. Man. I'd have had the program flash up a screen detailing who had created it. That it was most definitely not company property and they weren't licensed to have it. And the amount of licensing fees which were accumulating and the company had failed to pay. For the entire. Increasing. Time the song played. 
It'd be funny if you turned them in for copyright infringement of Little Wing. Adding a second to Little Wing each week was a brilliantly petty move tears of joy. Part of me wants to believe that IT knew how to fix it, they just decided not to. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.